What is going on, you guys? It is Dog Cost Crypto here with Is he fought Fiat about a launch or not? I am joined by the lovely, the immaculate. <laughs> Call Day Crypto, what's up? The best ever. The best ever. Chart God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things are all good. Just having some coffee here this evening and uh, getting ready to talk. Um, New beginnings, I would yeah. say, in this crypto space. We're seeing a lot of things blossom in crypto right now. And I think all the stuff that's being built over in the Pulse Chain ecosystem is really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, so that's what we'll be uh, discussing tonight a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're basically one of the few YouTube channels that really do focus on and spotlight, you know, not just Hex, but uh, this burgeoning ecosystem that is Pulse Chain. And one of the things we've talked about before in the past is that you need quite a few things to actually have an L, a working L1, right? You need the main L1 gas token. You need a place to to essentially either borrow on your crypto. You need a DEX and you need a place to or just to trade NFTs, basically. Right. right? So what we're going to be talking about today is really like the first and sort of the second level of that leverage, which is um, some version of an Aave, which is going to be, you know, fiat as well as... Um, you know, famous, which is going to be more like on-chain trading with leverage and stuff. Mm, so like GMX. GMX, exactly, and stuff. So we're today we have Buck from the famous Fiat team, man. What's up? And, of, of course, Dylan as Hello. well. Hello. Hey. Howdy, guys. Wonderful, man. We are alive, sir. How are you? Doing well. It's uh, it's late where I am, but uh, I'm very happy to be here. Excited how, for this. How show. late? It's 11 o'clock. All right. That ain't shit. <laughs> oh, the clock's just fine. You're 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 young. You look you, unless you're like this man. This man wearing a Gucci jacket, talking about how late it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're I ready mean, to go party, I think. Yeah, I mean, a normal night, you know, about three a.m. Usually, I go to sleep, but this, this, no, okay. don't, don't let this guy lie to you. He's going to Hot Lana. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, hey, that's fine. But thanks for uh, coming on, you guys, man. And what's uh, how are you doing, Buck? Yeah, guys, I'm well. It's uh, the middle of the afternoon where I am, so uh, yeah, the time the timing's excellent. Perfect. That's right. There you go, man. We got tea and Red Bull. <laughs> one to keep yeah. you going, one to have a relaxing afternoon. No, but hey, but thank you guys for coming on, man. I know you guys have a lot of stuff cooking up right now. Um, do you guys want to give everyone a little breakdown of like what might be happening pretty soon? I don't know. I've heard whispers, but I'd rather hear from the team themselves. Sure, uh, Bucky. You want to give the timeline and stuff, or? Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to give a precise timeline, but uh, basically we've more or less completed the audits. Uh, they will be done basically the second we tell Solidity Finance and Certec that uh, it, you know everything's final now. Um, so uh, they haven't found anything to stop us from moving forward. So nice. that's basically a tick. Uh, we've closed the sacrifice. Uh, we're finalizing the balances right now. We've published those a couple of days ago. Uh, we'll be basically going over those with a fine tooth, tooth comb. Fine tooth. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a, a very, a very, uh, yeah, a, a fine toothed comb. There you go. Uh, to make sure that there aren't any problems there. And um, yeah, so far, we haven't really found anything. Uh, so that's going pretty smoothly. Um, we're doing a bunch of other kind of ad mini type things uh, just, just ahead of the actual token issuance. Um, but yeah, we're we're on track uh, to launch. I think this month. Um, I won't say, you know, it's, it's coming tomorrow or anything like that, but, you know, I think, uh, in the, in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll have those tokens out and issued. Uh, so that's, uh, pretty exciting. So instead of two more weeks, it's three more weeks. <laughs> well, there's only two more, there's only two more weeks roughly in the month, right? So, hey, yeah, it's not that far uh, it is, it, so yeah, so, I mean, that's just my best guess. Like, you know, things can obviously happen, but, um, you know, we have uh, everything running on uh, ETH testnet. We're yeah. pretty happy with that. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's basically getting close to crunch time. Um, when we do launch, we'll launch with very tight settings. We'll monitor how everything's running for a bit. So it's not going to be like, you know, come, you know, uh, use this thing and go absolutely hate, you know, uh, no limit on the first day or whatever. Okay, um, we'll, be, we'll be very careful. No. We'll be very, we'll be very careful. Right. Yeah, I know we're boring that way. Damn, but um, damn it, yeah, Buck. We'll, if you knuck you buck no. <laughs> if you knuck you yeah. buck, but um no no but um, you know we, we, I, you we know, don't want to be like FTX or Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, you know, so yeah, we'll, right. we'll, we'll be we'll yeah. be we'll, we'll we'll be responsible and boring that way. Right. Um so yeah. No, but uh you know one thing that I do really appreciate about you guys is your teams and stuff is kind of like you guys have a really interesting model when it comes to doing like sacrifices as well as you try to keep them under um 
you, you don't go overboard, right? Or if you decide to take an, um, a specifically larger amount, it's because it is needed for a specific thing, right? Like with uh, Famous, you know, you guys had a little bit much larger sacrifice compared to the uh, the Famous one. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, the Fiat one, because you would, you need a lot more capital for these pools, basically, if I, if I got that correct, right? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Actually, the reason we did the famous sacrifice, or we called it the early bird sacrifice, was actually raised TVL to launch this yeah. on, um, to launch Fiat on Ethereum. Uh, so fame, it's a little bit confusing, I apologize, but fame is, you know, a project that we're going to launch on Pulse Chain. Yeah. Uh, it's a GMX fork. But uh, we need, we knew that we needed, in order to uh, have a proper Aave fork on Ethereum, that's going to be interesting. Um, we needed to have, you know, at least a few million dollars to put into the TVL. Um, <clears throat> we didn't think that it would be the right thing to do to pull that from the original fiat sacrifice, which is sort of earmarked for Pulse Chain. Right. Um, so we, so we said, you know, upfront to everybody, here's here's what we plan to do. Um, we're gonna we're gonna raise uh, and put that TVL to work on an Ethereum fork of Aave uh, called eFiat, and uh, uh, and we're gonna write, and you're gonna ultimately. Uh, get points, sacrifice points for both eFiat and uh, Pulse uh, Fame on Pulse Chain. So we did do that, um, you know, kind of telling everybody up front what our targets were. Um, and we basically hit those targets with both sacrifices um, and, and are pretty pretty happy about that. Right. So where did it close out at? Uh, I think we raised a little over $10 million uh, U.S. Nice. And you know why I really like that? Because that, that was a homegrown sort of thing. You know, it was more like th this is what this is one of the main things like me and Charlie really focus on is that we look for projects that are community based mm. and more grassroots versus they're just, you know, you know, you're getting a VC check in the background and stuff, yeah. Yeah. which just tends to, mm. uh, you know, you end up having kind of like a little more risk and stuff because that larger player, should they kind of decide to start cashing out, can really bring down the system or and then on top of that. Um, if there's no organic interest, it really is up to the team to really drum that up. And sometimes the teams really can't do that. So having mm. that already interest from the, mm. from the jump is actually very important. Yeah. And yeah, I think I agree with you. One thing, one of the reasons, you know, the sacrifice model, you can, you can criticize it for, in, in many ways. But one thing that's really good about it is it does show you that there is tremendous interest from the community for these product, products. People see their inherent value. Um, and we've gotten, you know, the, the, the support of the biggest people on Pulse Chain. You can really see that when you look at the waltz that sacrificed. You know, there's many of the sharks and whales involved. Um, you know, there's there's many of the kind of prominent people in the community. Of course, I, I just know this circumstantially because some of them have, uh, you know, uh, privately uh, told me if they're invested, right? So, um, you know, we've gotten several thousand people uh, to participate in the sacrifice. And that means that the community is really coalescing around it. Uh, and that's before Pulse Chain even exists. Yeah. So that, that's, a, that's a really useful thing. Because I think the two biggest risks here in, with this sort of thing, um, there's th sort of three big risks. One, one is the obvious one, which is the implementation. But that maybe doesn't worry me so much because um, you know, we can test it and uh, we're forking something. It's not like we have to go build this from complete scratch, right? right, right. Uh, so, we, so, we know, so, so we know that these products exist already. We have a full blueprint for them. Um, we have the ability to implement them, right? Um, so I'm not too worried about that. But the primary risks are really how successful is Pulse Chain going to be, and then how successful are we going to be getting the community to really wrap, uh, you know, their arms around us and say, "Hey, this is where we do borrowing and lending. This is where we do leverage trading," right? And I think right. in both instances, we've got um, a really nice first mover advantage that's going to be very hard for anybody else to come in and try and overtake us. Um, yeah. And and they're going to have ownership of this, as you said. So it's going to be very decentralized. Um, we're going to be single-digit owners of these tokens, right? So you know you don't have that kind of VC dumping risk uh, with this. The you know only people that are going to be able to dump are going to be the people that sacrificed. Um, so um, I'm not even going to be able to dump. I've committed to hold on, holding on to my tokens for uh, two years with Fiat, hey. for example. Yeah, so you guys get to dump on me. So enjoy. Well, in two years is perfect timing for for this bull market, and it's like, um, in terms of the hex community, right? Like, there's I think a lot of people who, you know, they're like, hey, I want to own part of the casino, but I don't want to do leverage myself. But I think um, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, the different types of people who end up using the platform. 
I think mm, just in general, right? Um, you're going to see a lot of people who, you know, probably from other communities try to come in and, and short hex and basically get wrecked. Um, but at least it gives them a platform to be able to do that from now, um, basically.